Hello and welcome to the 105th, I think I have that number right again, Dev Update. With me today, I have the little and not often seen Yasha Black, also known as YB on Telegram. How are you doing today, Yasha? Yeah, I'm doing fine, thanks. Thanks fine so much. Yeah, no, thanks so much for joining me. I kind of regret I uh, we had planned for um, noon UTC and I had something come up, so I was like, hey, can we do noon UTC on Friday or 11 UTC? And I was really hoping you'd say no to 11 UTC, but here we are at 5.55. It opened up at my time, 6, so you can see the sleep in my eyes, but we're going to soldier on here. All right, Yasha, so why don't we start off by asking um, what project you're on? Maybe people don't even know you, um, so let's start with the basics. What project are you part of? Uh, let's let's start from the very beginning, guys. I think. <laughs> uh, so currently, uh, I'm actually the founder, one of the co-founders of uh, Spectrum Labs. Uh, we're building solutions on top of UTXO blockchains mostly. Uh, so our first project was uh, Ergodex. It is a DEX on top of Ergo blockchain. Uh, and people across the Ferg ecosystem mostly know of us uh, because of this project. Uh, after that, uh, we uh, the, 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 there were some movements in the Cardano ecosystem. They uh, were launching a smart contract language called Plotus, uh, which is uh, we thought that is kind of similar to Ergo script. So we decided to migrate our code base. Uh, the Ergodex code base to Cardano actually, and to launch uh, two separate DEXs on top of two blockchains. We thought that uh, this migration uh, will be easy, but actually it won't, because Plutus is uh, quite quite different from Erg uh, ErgoScript. Uh, and uh, after that, we found that. Uh, having a name which is tied to the ergo ecosystem is not it may confuse some cardano side users so we decided to rebrand and we rebranded to spectrum spectrum dex spectrum finance actually this is our origin origin name uh and uh uh we developed two DEXs, actually, they're working in production right now, so anyone can use them. But uh, at the same time, uh, we uh, our main goal always was like building a cross-chain solution uh, for EOTXO chains and uh, create the integration uh, for EVM chains. So uh, basically, to, to bridge EVM with UTXO chains and uh, do all of this uh, cool stuff cr cr cool cross-chain stuff uh, uh so we we started to build uh, a layer one network uh, which must serve as a platform for uh natively uh people actually developers can uh, build uh, decentralized applications on top of spectrum network uh this is the core idea of uh, our layer one and uh, uh we, we thought that having actually three products under one brand name is kind of a mess uh, to uh, to communicate with the, the community about all of those products. Uh, uh, and uh, we actually decided to <laughs> split brands one more time uh, and uh, extract uh, the DEX on top of Ergo to the Ergodex brand. Uh, extract uh, Cardano Dex as a Splash, uh, and uh, the Spectrum network itself will live under the Spectrum branding name. So we are trying to simplify things. Uh, it may uh, sound a little bit over complicated for now for people who are joining us uh, uh, long enough, but uh, we think that for users who will join us in the future, it will be much easier to understand the, the values uh, that we provide with the different spectrum of products from our labs. 
so this is kind of a thing to do. this is uh, who am i and who I, what i'm working on well well the advantage there yasha is that you don't have to do any um new graphics for ergodex when you move back to that you just drum up the old <laughs> the old media folder and yeah that's up. right when when does that change occur? When are you going to rebrand? I see that the Ergodex URL is still active; it just doesn't go anywhere. When's that um, going to take place? Yeah, I think we will uh, do it uh, when this splash will actually be launched, uh, because it, it will be more consistent uh, to do it uh, at the same time. So we kind of separate two communities, uh, two d different products, uh, at the same time. Because and if we do it now, it may introduce far more confusion. And are you gonna are you gonna work on a rebranding for Ergodex? Are you just gonna bring back the uh, just like it was before the earlier migration? Yeah, I, th I think we will just use previous uh, like design components for branding of the Ergodex. Very interesting. All right, so that was a very good history. Thank you so much. Um, um what can we go back a little further what brought you into ergo in the first place did you work at any core protocol before this uh before you started on the dex or was the dex kind of your first jump into ergo from there yeah i mean uh i was working i i i, I was contributing to several uh, javascript but, uh, repos for the ergo ecosystem uh, for some time uh, but uh, after that, uh, Ilya just uh, contacted me and uh, said that, yo boy, we have this idea to to do the DAX on top of Ergo. Would you like to participate or not? Uh, it was actually the the birth of the of our team and uh, our labs, which is like, uh, yeah, uh, which currently exists. Uh, so basically, uh, this is how it was. Like two guys in two, we, there were three guys actually, but uh, uh, only me and Ilya in the founding team right now. Uh, so, like two guys in the garage wanted to build something. <laughs> That's how we started. That's uh, cool. Ergo. Yeah, Ilya was a core developer of Ergo, so he was uh, pretty convenient within the ecosystem. Uh, so he, he he like uh, explained me everything, uh, sent me that uh, Ergo manifesto. I was inspired like a like a goddamn. So <laughs> and still still would like to to work on all of this decentralized stuff. Uh, and I really think that uh, it is the next uh, step of the whole humanity and the society. So how do you how do you feel about that? Let's let's do a side question here. Um, you know, as as you said, um, the manifesto kind of spoke to you in that nature. Um, how do you feel about utilizing something like um, Spectrum to, you know, provide a decentralized uh, component of potentially centralized services that you connect to? So, you let's say is is are Cardano and Ethereum the only stops for for a spectrum um, network in the future, or are you going to go to even more centralized systems like uh, Solana or, or other kind of things? Um, what, where's, the, where's the stop there? And what do you feel that a decentralized application brings to kind of these chains that maybe, you know, under the hood aren't so decentralized after all? Yeah, I mean, the whole, uh, the whole goal of the spectrum network, uh, which is our main product, is to connect, connect actually people first of all, but uh, people are connected through different tools, uh, whether they are centralized or decentralized. So if uh, this or that product has product market fits and uh, there are a lot of users, uh, it means that it provides some value for users. Maybe it is a temporary value, you know, but anyway, we're working uh, in the current conditions uh, and we must uh, uh, work with them, actually. If we will simply ignore them, we won't reach anything. So Spectrum is uh, kind of a general framework for uh, connecting different data sources, such as blockchains, databases, uh, uh, banking systems, for example, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, 
we will go we will move on demand we will look at what uh, solutions ha have more demand uh, for today and we'll implement uh, things uh, for integration uh, with the spectrum network uh, so this is kind of a strategy for us uh, but anyway i think that uh, the whole world will go toward the de decentralization so eventually maybe in a couple of decades uh the world will reach this uh, uh total decentralization uh, someday and the network will be prepared for that that's a very positive outlook you have there yasha yeah, okay I, there, I there will the be anyway there will be any uh, some kind of fightings between elites and uh yeah. Uh, all of those uh, uh, cyberpunks, uh, Bitcoin Marxists, let's say. Uh, but uh, I think uh, going toward decentralization is kind of a natural evolution of the society. So I, I think uh, we will, eventually we will reach this goal someday. I hope so. Uh, that's, how? that's a philosophical topic we could yeah. get into for about two hours. So I'm not going to try to touch too deep into that. <laughs> um, let's go back to the technical side of, um, of Spectrum, uh, the Spectrum network, the layer one that you're working on. A lot of people um, might have some questions about, hey, you know, why, why build this when there's something like Rosen where you can cross chain securely? Um, you know, what's Spectrum network going to give me? Um, is it going to give me something similar to Rosen where I may use that instead of Rosen? Or is it going to give me like another component that will coincide and serve, a, serve another purpose besides Rosen? So I'll have two avenues here, one for one purpose, one for another purpose. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so Rosen, like any other bridge, uh, is uh, a tool that issues... Uh, and the underlying assets on the mother blockchain on the another blockchain right uh so there are some, some assumptions uh which uh, which live within the bridge with its uh, basically they're usually uh, security assumptions of the bridge uh and uh, the question is how you can utilize those assets uh within uh the ecosystem where uh, you have breached those assets. Uh, so, for example, if you bridge Bitcoin to er Ergo, uh, you can uh, utilize this wrapped uh, BTC stuff uh, only uh, within Ergo ecosystem. So, only within uh, the apps that are built on top of Ergo and or support Ergo, right? Uh, but Spectrum Network is a kind of a different beast. As Spectrum Network uh, basically is a tool for, for developers. So developers can build uh, their the apps on top of a uh, Spectrum Network layer uh, and uh, simultaneously have access, they have access to all of the liquidity that is on the other blockchains. Because Spectrum Network is connected to other blockchains, people can uh, transfer between Spectrum Network and uh, Blockchain X, uh, any amount of assets actually. And uh, another party who are, who are developers uh, can build the apps right on top of the Spectrum Network. And uh, uh, for example, they can advertise their product uh, not only in the Ergo ecosystem or only in the Ethereum ecosystem, but they can advertise it uh, in uh, all ecosystems. Uh, so, so simultaneously can, can i can i stop app, you right there can can yeah. you can you walk us through an example of uh let's say an app developer is developing something let's take a casino let's say somebody develops a casino <laughs> on um on spectrum network you know like okay. the thing that's going to attract maybe the most people there when you can bring any chain in and do it so how does it look like from a user's perspective are they traversing something and waiting time for a transaction to convert their bitcoin or convert their ethereum to some sort of spectrum based token um like that or are they able to interact with the contracts right there with their bitcoin with their ethereum yeah, so for example, we have a casino and uh, the user interface of the casino in the web. So a uh, user just uh, can connect uh, 
if, if they don't have any assets on top of, uh, yeah, let's assume that they don't have any assets yeah, on correct. the spectrum network, yep. right? Uh, but they have uh, assets, say, uh, on Solana, Ethereum, uh, and uh, whatever. So, but let's say they have uh, USDT on both Solana and uh, Ethereum. Uh, so they can come to the this casino interface. They can click uh, one button uh, to to connect uh, their what different wallets if they ha have them. Uh, they can put, uh, click one button to uh, transfer these USD USDTs uh, from uh, other blockchains to Spectrum Network and uh, actually start uh, utilizing this USDT within this casino. And then they could exit per se on a totally different blockchain if they wanted to when they cash out. Yes, yes, yes. So you're so this is so I can see this as right. Um, your um, as at least at least in my in my use cases, um, what comes to mind is that Spectrum would be used for um, essentially chain to chain swaps uh, more likely in what I'm doing, and Rosen on the other hand is something that I use for um, transferring stores of value. So instead of just the other day, my, I did my normal DCA but I just stayed on Cardano and I'm still holding the value of ergs in my Cardano wallet uh, without even traversing the chain. So as opposed to Spectrum Networks, which would allow me directly to swap in the back end there. So that's that's a pretty good distinction. That's um, That was, um, that helps, I think, uh, Yasha, great. Um, so what are the what are the inherent risks in running a full layer one chain where you are doing swaps uh, there as opposed to using something as simple as multi-sigs like Rosen to do um, cross-chain um, transfers? What are, what are the security risk or implications there, comparatively speaking? Yeah, we basically have a, a two-layer uh, two-layered consensus uh, mechanism for the Spectrum network. So the, uh, there are committees uh, for each uh, connector to the uh, layer one, to other layer ones or layer twos or whatever uh, systems. Uh, so those committees uh, can consist uh, more than 1,000 parties. Mm -hmm. So this we can call this system as decentralized. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, those committees are actually must prove that uh, the, this or that amount of assets were transferred from Bitcoin chain to Spectrum chain, for example. Another layer is the actually consensus layer of the whole Spectrum network protocol, and it is responsible for transactions, uh, uh, for internal transactions uh, within the Spectrum network. Uh, so the, 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 these are kind of two, com two core components uh, of our uh, security layer. What's what's the threshold there? How many people are running these consensus um, mechanisms, at least on the chain that's being transferred to Spectrum and the, the, the mechanisms that sit on Spectrum and watch Spectrum as well? So I, I think that uh, th this question is, mo is mostly for our technical guys, but uh, I know that uh, for the local committees, it is uh, uh, more than 1,000 uh, validators. Wow. Uh, for, okay. Uh, yes, and uh, for the Spectrum Network itself, uh, I think uh, it may vary. It, it it works actually like Cardano, so uh, any anyone can launch uh, a, a stake pool uh, like on Cardano and uh, to 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 be a validator in the Spectrum Network. So your, your Spectrum Network is going to be proof of stake essentially. Yes. Yes. In your code, it uses some Ouroboros concepts but uh it is uh, a little bit different ha has a little bit different approach this seems like quite a large undertaking yasha <laughs> what's your eta two weeks <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. two two weeks uh, as always i won't say soon i won't say, i will say two weeks Two weeks, perfect. Um, all right, so I have some community questions. Um, I've been asking the um, Sigmanauts chat for any questions um, on the guests that are coming up. But before I get to that, those questions, I want to ask um, a personal question. And this could be an HR question. So if you're going to get in trouble by HR Spectrum, just you know, you can say I can't answer this. 
Uh, but my main question is: Does um, does Gaza actually do anything over at Spectre, <laughs> <laughs> or does he just shit talk he on has online? Two roles. <laughs> <laughs> he has two roles. Uh, first of all, is to answer community questions in chats, and the second most one mostly to... answer community questions. What's the second yeah, one? Yes. And the second one is to help uh, those who create tickets uh, to resolve their problems. <laughs> so this is his role. Uh, I need to, uh, by the way, I need to recheck. Maybe he, maybe he would like to get more tasks. I think he does. I don't think he's busy enough, Yasha. I really don't. Really? You know? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I think okay. he's. I think, I think he said to me that. before in DMs that you know I really wish Yasha would give me more things to do. I just you know <laughs> have too much time on my hands. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> All right. Let's go to some questions here from the community here. Um, okay, so this this question is comparing, asking you to compare and give us a, a difference in the difference in uh, income you're making from general TXs on Cardano versus Ergo. Uh, is there a difference in the fees that you take from there? Is it a percentage that's kind of the same and is flat across the boards there between the two? Um, and um, and to further that question, which side is making um, Spectrum more in income fees at this moment. Okay, okay, well, that's actually a very good question. Uh, I have a short and long answer for that. Uh, which one? You can go uh, right in the middle. Short? Go for it. <laughs> okay, actually, we, we don't do anything from uh, the Cardano side right now. Uh, we do only if uh, we, we we make some money from the interface on the Argo side. Uh, we. Uh, from that fees, we can't even uh, cover uh, one developer salary monthly, honestly. Uh, so we mostly spend it uh, to uh, to keep service running, uh, servers uh, running, and uh, interface running, and this uh, this kind of stuff. One of the reasons that why we are creating the splash thing is uh, we would like uh, to create a decentralized uh, to re release the decentralized business model. Uh, we're trying to innovate not only on the technical side, but also on the business side of things. Uh, and uh, that is why we're releasing Splash uh, and uh, its token model. If you're not familiar, I really recommend to check the docs because the model is not uh, super mega innovative, but uh, uh, it is interesting. And uh, we didn't even see such things on UTX so yet. Uh, Yes, and uh, we are trying to build business around the splash, uh, but we want to not only us to earn from this business, but also community to earn from this business because uh, we're kind of in the crypto world and we need to innovate in decentralization, right? Uh, so we're making this DAO thing uh, on top of splash and uh, applying to it uh, a, a decentralized business model. So you don't you you don't make any uh, UI fees on the Cardano side? No, no. It, okay, wow. And especially since, um, right, uh, like Dex Hunter uses your contracts in the back end as well, just straight through. So you're just yes. doing name recognition only kind of building on the Cardano side for now. Yes, that's correct. Um, I think you answered this one about how far you're progressing with other chains. Um. Oh, okay. This one. As a cross-chain developer and researcher who started on Ergo, do you think moving cross-chain is something every D app should do? And I guess, I guess, do you recommend um, moving on to the Spectrum network uh, when that happens? I mean, it always depends how many users you would like to acquire to your product. Uh, so, uh, the, the more chains uh, are connected to the product, the more user base you will obviously get, right? All right, let's see. All right, this is a good question. Uh, comparing Ergo to other chains you're building, researching on, or you've used before in the past, uh, what are some things which make Ergo strong for uh, base, uh, the base layer come something? The word is cut off. Uh, I guess in general, what are some things that make Ergo um, uh, better or more attractive? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I'm not a smart contract developer. Uh, this is essential to understand. Uh, I was uh, working on UI stuff, uh, and uh, when we uh, just uh, began our journey, uh, but now I'm doing all, 
mostly business stuff, uh, connections, uh, speaking with others, building strategies, roadmaps, uh, mm. uh, this kind of stuff. But uh, what I heard from developers is that uh, on Ergo, it is very easy uh, to to understand what is going on actually, uh, because there are not uh, so many components and concepts uh, inside when you're trying to build uh, smart contracts. Comparing uh, with Cardano, for example, where you have these staking keys, staking credentials, these addresses, different types of addresses, these oh, ranking yeah. addresses, Gosh. what's going on here. Yeah reference scripts <laughs> i'm, I'm sure it works for them but every time i try to dive into those ecosystems i'm like oh my god take me back to ergo node where i can understand what's going on here <laughs> or the yeah, api yeah, yeah. Whew, it is tough i mean you you always need to uh, consider that your uh, smart contracts can be spammed by utx source right. kind of so so uh, yeah this onboarding for cardano is developers uh, it's just it's just harder and has uh, like uh, its learning curve is uh, uh, tremendous. So. Well, higher. Okay, that's a fair answer. That is. All right. Let's see. We've got two more questions from the community here. Um, I kind of answered this one, but um, yeah, uh, how can Splash benefit projects, community, and liquidity? Uh, on the Ergo product. So how are you going to entice Ergo users to build on Splash when they could just continue on Ergo and maybe promote bridge use or promote swapping directly to Ergo to use their, uh, on, on the Splash network to use their uh, Ergo side uh, dApps? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so Splash uh, does not benefit Ergo directly, let's say. Uh, but uh, we have uh, this partnership with Rosenbridge uh, to, uh, and our uh collective goal is to uh, increase the usage of the bridge uh so we'll be working on providing deeper liquidity creating incentives for the community for deeper liquidity on the cardano side of things and uh yeah that, that's basically how we are going to attract users uh utilizing more and more the rosen bridge uh, between ergo and cardano's ecosystems uh, uh, by, by, by incentives and uh, attract and liquidity acquisition for this splash protocol. Super cool. All right, last question. Here we go. This is from Joe. You might know him as Armenio. Okay. He's, he says, please ask Yasha if he's breaking up with us again. <laughs> <laughs> breaking for for, for, for what <laughs> i think he's worried you're gonna leave what him. is this <laughs> i think he's feeling the hurt maybe from going to the cardano side and then maybe um being rebranded as aerodex again i don't know oh joe's joe's a very emotional animal yasha you really got to be sensitive with joe <laughs> no worries no worries are you sticking around i guess is the answer yasha <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right fantastic okay uh let's go to uh let's go to the dev update reading how's that sound yeah for sure all right let's do it all right i'm gonna start off with colby Celador. ergo node uh message class was refracted for ergo core integration test halfway done migrated library for docker um uh, scripto uh scripto scripto uh, revived and got merged scala 3 version done up next, integration test, fixing, and rethinking, ergo core test, more Scala 3 migrations. All right, looks like you get the man himself, Kushti. Take it away. So for ergo protocol R&D, we have uh, reference client uh, 5.0.20 release, which is quite cool. Uh, also, Kushti reviewed and merged uh, pull request uh, 109. Uh, and... Uh, Currently, he seems to be working a Sigma map implementation in the pull request uh, uh, 951. Uh, uh, also, uh, he's prototyping some sidechain stuff, uh, which is cool. I, I, I didn't even know about that. Oh, really? <laughs> but now I know. <laughs> yeah, since uh, since the sub the community was really pushing on like. Um, 
speedy transaction times and dropping this transaction time from an average of two minutes to something else. So one day Kushti, um, I don't know if he had it up before, but he maybe recommented on that uh, on the Ergo forum, started talking about sub blocks and the sub block framework. And so it's been something that he's um, been working on uh, in a side chain frameworks. Super cool. Kind of these independent side chains that can have their own purpose um, that you can mine separately. They can do different things. So you can have a side chain that assists with sub blocks that are then rolled up into the chains. So you can have 20 second sub blocks and roll it up and, and, and go from there kind of thing. Speaking of, what are your, uh, what are your transaction times on your layer uh, one uh, proof of stake chain? What, what are you guys aiming for? Spectrum network? Yeah. We can we will measure it when it is released and maybe <laughs> to, to, to do you, something. What are you aiming for? Yeah, you have something in mind like you want it under 20 seconds or 10 seconds or uh look, we are referencing the uh, Ouroboros uh consensus, so that they're kind of a correlation between uh, how fast the consensus is reached. Uh, so this is uh this cause this bl block production uh thing in the blockchain right and uh, affects the speed uh, but we are doing some modifications uh to to that layer so uh it is faster than uh than cardano oh uh, awesome least. very cool very cool oh then you got dexy here yeah we have dexy here i can't really wait when they release uh this in production <laughs> but uh, it seems like the uh they did some close testing uh and uh they're successful uh so also uh that dmitry yourself is working on uh bank uh right uh and uh uh yes and the uh, code for for us is working on redemption supports in off-chain code so I meant to ask. I meant to ask you, Yasha, um, yeah. when you were speaking about how you're not really a smart contract uh, developer. You're more uh, UI front end uh, general programmer. What? Um, now I know Cardano is getting better at their tooling, but one thing that we like to you know preach about Ergo is that you don't need to know much as far as smart contracts go or anything else to interact with a chain. We have things like um, um, ErgPy where you can interact with Python and send and receive transactions and mint tokens. You have a uh, fleet SDK um, uh, with JS that you can you know, program completely without even uh, that kind of thing. Is that something that's ever you know, tickled your fancy to be like, hey, I'm going to use my skills at uh, designing and building something um, on the web, and then I'm going to learn how to interact with these tools so that I can, you know, maybe do something on the blockchain. Is that is that something that you're interested in or ever thought of doing, specifically on Ergo, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, uh, are you asking me to become a developer on top of Ergo, right? <laughs> no, no. I'm asking. I'm asking you. You know, because one of the things, as I said, one of the things we preach is that there's this really cool tooling on Ergo. Where you don't have to know any of that like cardano you yeah uh, early on they didn't have amazing tooling early on so you really had to know uh some of that haskell code to be able to develop and interact with the chain um as louis vatra and joe had said they've gotten much much better and more advanced with their tooling but as i said ergo's got that these these libraries that you can use that you don't need to necessarily if you know java you know js then you can um then you can interact with a blockchain create send check transactions um you know verify wallets and those kind of things is that something that's ever made you think hey you know i can i don't have to dive deep and learn another language i can use one of these tool sets that's in a language that i know and um and still interact with the blockchain and build something and just not build what Gaza tells me to build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I mean that uh, having all of these libraries uh, to onboard uh, developers is uh, very necessary stuff for any blockchain ecosystem, uh, especially JavaScript uh, and Python libraries, because uh, all of the front ends are written in JavaScript and all of the bots are written usually in Python. Right, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, those uh, two libs are kind of essential. Uh, for me personally, uh, I, I currently have different goals. Maybe uh, a couple of years ago uh, when I were a developer, I had uh, like uh, 
to build a skill set, to build a portfolio goals and this kind of stuff. But uh, now I have another one. So I, ca I can talk to, to for, for myself <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but uh, I, in my opinion, uh, Ergo is on the right direction, building all of these libraries for different types of developers uh, to simplify the onboarding process to the ecosystem. Maybe someday you'll surprise us. With yeah, also, there, there is another core component uh, to onboard devs. It, it is it, it usually called incentives. <laughs> <laughs> It gives you a warm feeling, Yasha, to develop on Ergo. Isn't that enough? Uh, yes, I have developed uh, <laughs> some, some tools, uh, but uh, I, re I really, uh, I think most of the developers who are in the ecosystem right now and still stick to it are uh, working, first of all, for the idea, not for, for money or some incentives. Mm -hmm. Because they are inspired for, from this uh, ergo manifesto. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I forgot this word. Uh, they are inspired by uh, all of the decentralized stuff that uh, True. is ideology, uh, which is uh, in the ergo ecosystem. And and I uh, was one of them uh, initially. So that, that, is, that is why, yeah, Guy, guys like 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 we are. Are actually pushing this ecosystem. Yeah, maybe maybe someday we will find some uh, stupid VC who will give us a couple of millions, and we will spend <laughs> them <laughs> on incentives. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Captain Nemo with Nautilus team update. Nautilus wallet still working on refractoring and uh, manifest of version three migration, and added arbitrary message signing. We'll do a release over the week. Super cool. All right, let's see. Then there was some chatter in here that we don't need to go over. The next update is um, is a SIGs. Let me take this one because that's us, and then you can take the next one. Sound all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the SIGs, uh, Market Making Proposal Review and Community Feedback, uh, that was on Sunday. Um, we are going to aggregate the results, uh, see what the community thinks, talk to the SIGs, and bring one market maker proposal forward. And then on top of that, there's a second community proposal that I just finished writing last night, um, uh, potentially utilizing the community, utilizing liquidity and loaning it to the community to run their own market making bots uh, via Hummingbird or some sort of ergo hack integration where we modify these tools to work on the top three or four ergo, nice. ergo CEXs plus um, uh, Spectrum Network as well. So we can kind of have a a bot that does uh, these market making opportunities with the community doing it with loaning them and then paying the community the fee that we would have paid a market maker uh, to incentivize that. So that's all written up. Uh, those two proposals hopefully will come out this weekend uh, for the community to see and we'll go from there. All you, Louis Vatra. So he's working on three projects actually. So first one is Crux uh, Finance. I, Yasha, I wouldn't say working. He's. <laughs> we love to, give, we live, love to give Louis Vata shit about when. So before you say the word Crux or Padilla or NFT sale, just use the word when before you announce these. Give it a try. Okay. okay. When Crux Perfect. Finance. Uh, so it's basically create a subscription seat up. Uh, and tested it uh, so users can use different currencies and uh, prepay their subscriptions which is which is cool if it works on smart contracts by the way and uh, he's still working on finalizing coin coin lease csv expert uh, what the hell is this okay coin, coin lease a tax integration kind of thing it helps you uh, organize for taxes for those crypto users who report their crypto for taxes. So essentially, it it gives an export in that format that you can easily ingest right into Coinly to help manage your taxes, your tax Oh, reporting. that's cool. That's cool. So the code is a bit slow. <laughs> uh, and uh, soon uh, it will be faster, it seems. Uh, so when Paydea, uh, working, he's working on contract documentation finally so it seems like contracts are written right 
uh, and uh, documenting the beta version of the contracts and also outlining the work that needs to be done before uh, they move to MVP. It's cool. Uh, I'm personally waiting for payday stuff. Uh, want to to, to 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 click some buttons there. Uh, and uh, NFT sale is here. I forgot to say when. Yes, when NFT sale. Perfect. Right. Uh, he has upgraded uh, to latest upkit. Cool. Uh, and he has removed uh, Danides dependency, uh, whatever. Dan, Dan Aids, yeah. Yep, I believe that's um, this custom thing. A couple of them wrote in the back end at one point. Too. I think they use that on ErgoPad as well. It's just a... Uh, another way to get data out of um, either whatever node is filling up their database as far as that goes, but it's a whole thing you can install. It's interesting. Yeah, I think that's it from Louis Vatra for this week. Okay, let's see. We have PGR456 on Sigma Space. Super cool, uh, fully different explorer. I suggest you guys check it out if you haven't before. Um, added rich list, which allows all addresses, dark mode, mobile optimizations, currently working on minor store and storage rent overview. Are you who are you responsible for the UI of the current explorer? Was that you or was that Ilya? No, I, th I think it is Dmitry Usov. Oh Dmitry, okay. Okay. But you guys who who designed the um Weren't you guys going to put forth a design? Spectrum is going to put forth a design for a new UI, and you guys did a raffle of it. Yeah, we did one, but uh, it was not uh, funded. Yeah. So we uh, <laughs> we kind of <laughs> stopped at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. Liquid phase is THC, all you. Uh, so, liquid phase. Uh, he's putting together a better pitch deck uh, and investor presentation, which will record as the video for Ergo YouTube. Uh, they are doing this uh, application regarding uh, uh, music, right? You got it, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're working on, uh, so kind of a huge update from them, uh, working on IRBO uh, to ADA initial Rosenbridge offering to ADA cross-chain liquidity bridging strategy. Cool. Uh, so they need uh, to raise some funds to pay for final push uh, in front-end development and uh, marketing uh, for their launch. Uh, by the way, uh, haven't they launched already or? Um, it's not a, I don't think it's a, um... Uh, user usable as far as that goes. Their token is launched, but the actual product hasn't um, hasn't launched. Okay, got it. Uh, so they published uh, synopsis uh, and goals on the platform and for socials uh, to begin fostering the discussion publicly about P two P publishing. And there is some link uh, where to, to, to Twitter. Uh, so uh, look. They're looking uh, into best methodology, existing contracts on Ergo for DAO royalty sharing, and uh, they actually need payday uh, stuff, right? And uh, looking we all do, at that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> AHT framework uh, for profit sharing models, uh, potentially payday for governance. <laughs> That's um, AHT that. is referring to the auction house token framework, which allows for. Have you looked into that? Are you familiar with that? No, I am not. Unfortunately, so auction house frame auction house token framework is pretty neat. Um, 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 in that, um, what's it called? Uh, it's there for anybody's taking, and currently, uh, it's producing revenue and distributing it back to members of auction house token stakers so anything that comes into auction house is purchased some of that split off and given back to the auction house token holders so um it looks like thc is uh, mike is going to be utilizing this somehow into the dow to be able to um um potentially share profits of thc via that model which is pretty neat
yeah sounds sounds cool i'm not pretty much in uh, in tokens uh whether it be ergo or cardano ecosystem I, i'm not uh you're you're a purist all. you're a purist yasha only yeah, yeah. coin only coin for you uh, is it a question <laughs> nope <laughs> i'm sure you hold spf yasha right uh nope no, no you don't hold spf no <laughs> Do they pay you in like um, bread and water? <laughs> who, 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 who are they? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> you don't pay yourself, I guess. All right, perfect. <laughs> uh, I mean, we decided it, it, it is not a public info yet, but we decided not to unlock uh, Team SPF until the network is launched. So we will. That's some serious incentive. Wow. Long locking in the vesting contract uh we'll announce uh, during this month i think would you like uh, me to cut that out yasha or leave that in this recording uh it, it can be uh, a secret inside <laughs> the video okay all right <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right keep going you got thd dao yeah so they have dao now uh, assembling the first on chain all uh layer one uh, compute uh, collaboration uh, compilation between this the, the, those the words are so long uh, i think mike does that uh, on purpose don't worry. between, <laughs> between uh, multiple musicians and multiple songs right uh, so three tracks by separate musicians have been submitting thus far uh fine uh and they will be releasing under the DAO is uh publishing nt uh is the first real decentralized music album published on any blockchain cool uh my quality uh has reduced as significantly since it's back uh irl uh music event live stream so music uh, performed lineup for the event in is completed uh, and a location is scouted uh, and the permit application submitted uh, so they also have uh, this secret nft digging by project <laughs> cool uh, so they had an idea uh, for an entire digging ecosystem to emerge on ergo assemble the team uh, and pitch the idea infrastructure to the team so this is kind of an initial steps of the project cool 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 so we have uh, a huge guy rosenbridge here all right let's see we've got rosenbridge uh they've implemented a straightforward star topology in both relay and node packages achieved a successful limited version of hole punching through months of rigorous testing facilitated nat traversal and diminishing reliance on relays awesome as i know early on those relays were kind of causing a a bit of a struggle with some of the guards talking to each other uh, but uh, it's been pretty steady um since the launch but that's great that they're um, gonna reduce reliance on that complete research and development on rosenet security outlining the essential features for implementation uh, commence the development of whitelisting capabilities for the network um, they've added API key support for increasing security and preventing unintended API calls. That's great to hear. That was something that um, that a community member, actually, Ozil, I believe, was very adamant about. Uh, I'm not sure how much of Ozil's code that they're taking into consideration here, but uh, I'll check up on that to see how that's going. Super awesome. Um, implement EVM scanner based on RPC API. Implement abstract observation extractor available in Rosenbridge observation extractor. Uh, Explore observation extractor is released and update um, Rosenbridge watcher data extractor according to a new version of contracts. Contracts are finalized and update is under review and test. Rosenbridge utils, Explore Rosen extractor is released. Implement universal Rosen extractor for Bitcoin. Yippee, that's going to be fun. Uh, Rosen chain, add abstract Bitcoin network class. Update event trigger type and register type and generated transaction according to new version of contracts. Super cool. Give them a rose. All right. Looks like you got a short one from Loki Nerd. That's TCG. 
Yeah, so Blitz is approaching launch season. Uh, Ergopod is uh, powering through uh, their pack sale process uh, uh, dev. Uh, and uh, he and uh, Quokka, uh, he, he is developer, right? He's, he's most on the front end yeah, side. You got it, Quokka, yep. Crypto Quokka. Yeah, and uh, they're finishing uh, up uh, the website uh, all while uh, they continue to update the game. Uh, and they're holding play, place tests, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. et cetera, you got it. We've got cheese enthusiasts with Lissos. Uh, the client continuing to work on a basic client. Initial integration of Stratum into client has begun. And then NISPs running various statistical tests to help with finding the best parameters for NIPs, NISP evaluation. Okay. What is NISP, by the way? Non, non something, non something, something proofs. Non sufficient. I don't, it's something. Um, it's how they, I believe it's how he stores information for uh, proof of work effort on chain or something similar to that. So uh, he came up with it during a hackathon, I think hackathon version six or five it was, uh, and he's going to utilize it uh, for uh, in Lithos, I believe. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, you got Death, uh, Death Gripson for you. No, I Atomic swap web interface. Uh, so competitors uh, for the Ergo decks, as I can see, uh, so basic Ergo and uh, Cifolia network account uh, initialization has been integrated and is working through interface. Interface style improvements uh, from uh, feedback. Cool. Yep. Uh, and uh, where they're working on uh, making EI Jamal, uh, uh, whatever it is, a uh, communication channel set up between uh, client and server, generalized and seamless. I wouldn't say it's your competition. I would say Atomic Swap is a different, like Rosen is, you know, going to provide, um, as I said, a store of value equality on both chains. Um, and Spectrum is more for swap swaps. Atomic Swap has got that, you know, it even takes the, to me at least, it takes the different use case than Spectrum. Spectrum, even though it is decentralized, um, Atomic Swap has that peer-to-peer -peer kind of nature that um, is attractive to some people as opposed to going through pools uh, and smart contracts, smart contract pools um, on the decks kind of thing. So. Yeah, it's not a com direct competitor. It is kind of an alternative. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's that's better said. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah, better than I said. Uh, okay. Um, Glasgow has been ch categorizing all the ergo related uh, gits on Gris. Work in progress. We can sort by things like department, category, person, language, etc., and see a quick overview of all the relevant repositories. This is super cool. Um, um, he's got a link to it here. If you guys, if anybody has time, please check it out. It's it even has um people's names in it with what they're supposed to be doing and what they're working on. Um, and that is it. Wait, 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 wait. What is, what is this? Uh, this is a kind of a task tracker? Or yeah, kind of. Yeah, you got it. Yep. 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 Uh, what do oh. you guys use for a task tracker at Spectrum? Yeah, we're using the... Uh, Your head? <laughs> okay. I've never heard of that. Cool. Is it open source? It's kind of uh, a narrowly focused... Uh, Dust tracker for software development. Cool, cool. With all of that uh, integrations, actually, their top one, I think, a tool for software development dust tracking. Uh, yeah, he just introduced this a week or so ago. I take a quick, brief look at it. I think he also uses um, it's called Traeger or something similar to that for like his Kanban uh, tracking of projects and things like that. Um, so combined with this, or else this is replacing this. I'm not sure. I didn't pay 100% attention to uh, what he was saying, but it's, it is super cool to be able to track this stuff and see, uh, keep track of what your responsibilities are and what you've promised <laughs> as far as that goes. Um, okay, that is it for reading of the dev updates. Yasha, we are on words. After I do a few cuts, I think we'll be right about an hour, which is one of the longer dev updates, which is perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> 
That's I, cool. I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, anything you want to close with? Any um, Anything you want to say for Splash, Spectrum, Ergodex, yourself, the casino you're going to build on the level one of Spectrum soon? Yes. Uh, the First of all, uh, join our casino in the future, uh, but we won't build it. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I, actually, it was a quite a cool experience uh, reading those news with you today. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, f- f- this is it called the Dev Updates, right? You got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah, ha- happy to join uh, s- s- sometime later uh, as well. Uh, also, guys, uh, join our channels, join our Discord, uh, both Splash and Spectrum. See our updates. We really want to in- innovate in this space and uh, build uh, some cool stuff uh, just for people. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's basically it. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks so much, Yasha. Uh, everybody have a great day and uh, we'll see you later. Ciao.